Okay, welcome everyone that uh, joined us here in council chambers as well as those viewing from home. This is the meeting of the Pocosin City Council for Monday, December 9th, 2013. If we could all uh, rise, I'll have invocation and lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for the many blessings we have received in our city in 2013. As we approach a new year of service to our city, state, and country, we ask for your continued guidance. <clears throat> Help us to recognize the importance of each individual we serve and keep us mindful of those in need. Our city will face new challenges in the coming year. So, Father, we ask for a portion of your wisdom in dealing with these challenges. Empower this council to continue to work together as we know that the best decisions in government require debate and compromise that is enabled by respect and friendship. Finally, we ask that you make your presence felt by our citizens in need in this holiday season. And for your courage and peace, that it be felt by those who serve our country, state, and city, and those who place themselves in harm's way to protect all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, first item on the agenda tonight is uh, a presentation of the financial audit. And presenting that tonight is Mr. Bob Bellot. And we look forward to uh, hearing from you, sir. Please. Members of Council, Madam Clerk, Mr. Moore, Randy, good to see you. Uh, I am here to deliver the results of the uh, examination that was completed for the fiscal year 2013 as required by the Code of Virginia. There are actually three audit reports I'll discuss with you tonight and give you an overview of the uh, audit examination itself. So first and foremost is the audit report on the basic financial statements and the related footnotes themselves. That report is an unmodified or clean report. I congratulate you on that. The statements are prepared in accordance with accounting principles that are generally accepted in the United States of America. That's a value-added statement to the city of Pocosin as it allows your users to compare your statements with other cities throughout the Commonwealth as well as the nation and looking back over statements of that you have had over the past years. During the past year, there were no material transactions or balances that lack authoritative consensus within that technical body of literature known as generally accepted accounting principles. In addition to testing the financial numbers themselves, we also test your compliance with laws and regulations. That's the uh, matter of a second report that's contained in the CAFR document you have tonight, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. Please, the financial statements are yours. The responsibility for a fair presentation remains with you. That responsibility entails the maintenance and design and implementation of an adequate system of internal controls to prepare these statements and provide a fair presentation with them in them. Our responsibility is to express opinions on those financial statements. We study and consider your system of internal control not for the purpose of opining on the internal control, but rather to assess the risk that a material mistake <coughs> may exist within those statements. We believe that the audit evidence we've gathered over the past year is adequate to provide for a, a basis for our opinions. I talked just a little while ago about another report on testing your compliance with laws and regulations that may have a material impact on these financial statements. That particular portion of the examination, in addition to auditing standards generally accepted and set by the Auditing Standards Board, are government auditing standards as issued by the uh, Controller's Office of the United States of America. In addition to government auditing standards, we also test your compliance with the specifications for county, cities, and towns as issued by the Auditor of Public Accounts of the uh, Commonwealth of Virginia. 
those reports are contained towards the back of the CAFA document that you have tonight under a tab called Compliance Matters. That is also an unmodified or a clean opinion. Lastly, and also contained in the Compliance tab contained in that document, is our last report that is done in conjunction with OMB, Office of Management and Budget, Circular A133, or single audit, as a lot of you may know it. It's an audit over your compliance with your expenditures of federal rewards or the grants that may come through of this. Our report on your compliance with the types of requirements on each of your fa major federal programs is also an unmodified or clean report. Cherry Becker, myself, all members of my staff were, are, continue to be, and are independent, which is an important part of our relationship with the city. The notes to financial statements are an integral part of these financial statements. Note one to these financial statements contains certain significant accounting policies which explain in more detail the numbers and the transactions that have occurred and are displayed in the basic financial statements themselves. Of note of interest this year, and our audit report does uh, highlight this with an emphasis paragraph, were three matters. <coughs> First of which were uh, two new accounting standards issued by the governmental accounting standards boards. Uh, 63 and 65 were the ones. Now, 63 wasn't as significant <coughs> as it changed the name of your government-wide statement of net assets to a now a statement of net position. In addition, 63 introduced the concept of deferred inflows of resources and deferred outflows of resources. Now, under 63, there really weren't many matters that would fall into that category. However, the city elected to early implement statement number 65, and we concur and applaud you for early implementing that statement. Under 65, 65 addresses as, uh, items that were previously reported as assets and liabilities and put them into a mezzanine level on your financial statement of deferred inflow and outflow. The main thing that happens at the city of Pocosin is uh, refund, deferred gains and losses from refundings of debt. Additionally, 65 requires the immediate expensing of bond issuance costs. So all bond issuance costs that exist, existed in statements a year ago has been charged off and beginning uh, net position has been restated for that. Lastly was the Parks and Recreation Fund, formerly a proprietary fund. Uh, the proprietary fund has been discontinued and those assets and liabilities have combined with the general fund in the governmental activities on the government-wide basis. Our opinions are not modified with regards to the implementation of these standards or the combination of the Parks and Recreation. Financial statements contain estimates. Management's required to make these estimates. They make these estimates based on present circumstances, assumptions about current and future events. Uh, assumptions could change. Estimates may need to be revised. Some of the more significant <coughs> estimates that are contained in your financial statements are the estimate of allowance for uncollectible accounts, the determination, actuarially determination of the OPEB or other <coughs> post-employment benefit liability, as well as the claims liability that's displayed in the government-wide financial statements. I'm pleased again to report for fourth or fifth time in a row now, I guess, we had no disagreements or difficulties dealing with management this past year. We identified no misstatements in the financial statements, either individually or in the aggregate, and we're not aware of any consultations with other accounting firms with regards to our auditing procedures or accounting standards that are applied in the statements. Lastly, at the risk of leaving someone out, I'd like to uh, express our sincere thanks to the finance department of the city, both the city and the schools, in particular, Teresa Owens, Robin Bellamy, Bill Bowen, and Jean Ray Holstein up in the uh, school department. That's my formal comments. If there's questions, please. Questions of counsel? No. Sounds good. No.
thrilled by the report. We thank you for doing this service for the city. Uh, it's very it's an important service to make sure that that uh, the system of checks and balances is is in place. And we really appreciate uh, your audit of our accounts. Uh, we always like it when it's a positive report, like for five years uh, that you've been doing that. Yes. And I understand tonight that uh, in addition to that, that you've taken this time and you're thinking about retirement. Is that correct? Uh, that's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is the boss? I'll be doing? around for another five months. So okay. it's, uh, um, I will have to relinquish my partnership interest in the firm. Our particular firm has a uh, mandatory retirement age of 65. I'll... Uh, have the day after Christmas, I'll be 65. So uh, our firm year end is April 30th. So I'll, I'll be required to give up my partnership equity interest in the firm. But it has certainly been a pleasure dealing with you all. Uh, we would like to continue that relationship. And uh, that does end our contract with the city. Uh, I guess the, the rebid process will probably begin within the next month or two. And, uh, uh, we've enjoyed it. We we do intend on proposing on the engagement again. So thank you Great. for saying that, the Mayor. Hey, thank you. Thank you again, and thank you for the years that you've helped us out. Thank you. Okay. Enjoy it. And uh, one one follow-up statement to uh, to our account, our finance department, two of which are sitting here tonight, <coughs> Rob Bellamy and uh, Teresa. Thank you. That, that report, while absolutely... Uh, you know, level tone and it's all perfect, that's not easily accomplished. And uh, especially taking on the Parks and Rec development, uh, Parks and Rec fund this year. That alone could have presented quite a bit of challenges. So y'all are to be commended in the finance department for the way that you uh, professionally handled the budget year. So thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Enjoy your retirement. <coughs> All right, no other special presentations. I'll now open an audience for visitors, and if anybody would like uh, to address council on any issue, I will remind everyone that we have a public hearing tonight, and if you're here to discuss that public hearing, uh, please your, save your, your comments uh, for them. But if you have an issue that you'd like to address council on something other than that, <coughs> now is that time. Okay, seeing none, I'll close the audience for visitors and ask council for consideration of the minutes. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the minutes of our regular meeting of November 25th, 2013. Second. second. A motion made and seconded that we approve the minutes of November 25th. Any questions or comments? <coughs> okay, Judy, please. Councilman Mayor. Aye. Councilwoman Crawford. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilman Bernal Aye. and Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of seven to zero. Okay, thank you very much. And now we are on the public hearing. And this public hearing is a reconsideration of the request of Jesse Dunlap for a conditional use permit for the establishment and operation of a landscape business at 93 <coughs> Firth Lane. I know that this was brought up by council last time for reconsideration. And uh, to do due diligence, I'd like uh, planning to come up and re reintroduce the, the issue. Thank you, Mayor and Council. As you recall, at your um, first meeting in November, this was brought up for reconsideration. Uh, the property owner, Mr. Jesse Dunlap, owns DSD Landscaping and is presently operating out of 93 First Lane, which is a, a large property located um, off of With Creek Road, accessed by the private First Lane. <clears throat> uh, staff is proposing a uh, 10 conditions, and uh, I believe as Ms. Uh, Councilman Green amended last time, the new conditions uh, would affect the hours of operation. Uh, the hours of operation shall be limited to 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday, uh, with no Sunday hours being permitted. Um, and then added three additional conditions. Uh, number 11 would be one commercial dumpster <coughs> is permitted, provided it is screened from view and is only emptied on weekdays between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. 
12, occasional commercial deliveries are allowed on weekdays between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. And 13, no retail sales would be permitted on the property. Uh, staff is proposing a variety of uh, screenage procedures that would uh, help protect adjacent properties, um, currently developed properties and presently undeveloped properties from any uh, issues resulting from this use. And um, as brought to my attention prior to the meeting, condition number six, um, if, if the, uh, particularly number 11, um, regarding the commercial dumpster is approved, would need to be amended. Uh, currently it reads no commercial trash receptacle shall be permitted, so that would have to be uh, stricken as it would be in conflict. But I can answer any questions you have about this application. Questions? Uh -huh. I do. Okay. And yeah. number six, again, uh, the second sentence there says, no stockpiling of landscaping, waste, or material uh, shall be permitted. Uh, is that at all, or does that allow him like, to bring back a half a load of mulch or some uh, expensive pavers or something and store them for a few days or a week? Uh, what presently, do we mean by that? Presently, as that's written, it, it would uh, restrict any storage of uh, landscaping um, in mulch, what would be considered um, a restricted material. Um, that, that sounds a little restrictive to me because there can easily, in this kind of business, be occasions where he may need to bring back a half a load and then take them to another job either tomorrow or next week. And I think a time limit rather than just saying no would would be a lot. I think it'd just be better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kevin, I, I have concern with number 10 where it said the permit may be subject to renewal um, after a three-year period. I, I would be a lot happier if that said is subject to renewal after a three-year period because I, um, we had some conversation with Mr. Dunlop and he indicated that he intended for this just to be for a short period of time until he established his business, then it would go away to a commercial area. And the last part of that said that we may opt to renew it indefinitely through inaction, okay, which means that if we don't do anything, it's there in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. And you may as well just go ahead and draw a circle around it and put a commercial zone right there in the middle of the residential area. I'm not happy with that. Okay. And so I, I think it needs to come back in three years. And, and then we have to look at it in three years to see oh. if we want to renew it. All right, so the, that would read the use permit is subject to renewal after three-year period <coughs> and strike the rest? I think it should say shall be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shall be. Okay. <clears throat> and then scratch the rest. Okay. And I guess that would be included in the future if you decided you wanted to do something. Like <coughs> okay. I have a question. Okay. Uh, when this originally came to us, am I remembering correctly that it that it was recommended to be denied, but if we did want to approve that these were the conditions to be attached? Uh, the Planning Commission recommended that this be approved uh, unanimously. Right. Um, and in <coughs> fact, they, uh, they originally eliminated some of the staff conditions, primarily about the uh, commercial trash receptacle. Any other questions of planning? Right. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. All right. Now, this is a public hearing, and uh, it is a reconsideration, and I'd ask if anyone here would like to address council on this conditional use permit. Mr. Dunlop. Good evening. Um, I've spoken with some of you guys and some of you even made it out there too. For uh, those that, that may not know you at home and I, I apologize. No, you're right. Jesse Dunlap. I live at 93. I own the business, right. work the business. I'm the laborer, accountant, accounts payable, all that. So, um, Some of you have made it out to the site. It is an obscure property. Um, I want my business in Pocosin. I'm sure you guys want businesses in Pocosin. You know, it's, it would be a lot cheaper to have a business in Hampton, but I don't want a business in Hampton. You know, I could have stayed at Carroll Drive and rented a property across from NASA or something, but you know, the, I'm sure most everybody's familiar with 93 First Lane. It's a very obscure oddity, anomaly of a property. Um, you know, to come to an agreement on what you guys will approve that we can abide by and still makes it worthwhile for us to be there. 
I think it's kind of a win-win for everybody. Um, I understand that when we first were denied, some of the people thought maybe we were looking to stockpile, have a retail establishment. I in no means ever plan on remotely wanting a retail establishment. Um, I have 75% of the people who work for me are Pocosin people in town, come there, they park there. Where they park on the property doesn't really affect neighboring properties um, as it is now. Um, I know the dumpsters were kind of a point of contention. Um, I've spoken with Mr. Willis, who built the car wash, is eventually going to be building the townhomes behind it or the condos behind it. There's going to be four dumpsters right there, you know, if it's a 24 place unit. Um, ultimately, it is going to be a V dot lane, is my understanding. Um, if anything, I think that would weigh a little bit to my favor. I could understand much more the concerns of my traffic coming and going if it stayed a single 12 foot wide private lane, um, being that it might ultimately be a 30 feet yellow line down the middle. I think it lends itself more to what we will have coming and going um, from that. Um, you know, I'm all in on this property. Um, rely on it need it. The need for, like you said, just the, the occasional thing being, you know, there's never going to be a, a massive pile of soil and mulch. You know, I'm not running a Bobby Tigner style of yard there. Um, my intentions are to grow, as I told you guys there. I'm perfectly okay. You know, I'm all for a two or three year assessment of what I have going on. If we grow, I'm buying Carol Moore's property and developing it anyways, you know. Um, I've already looked into that. It's just cost prohibitive right now. So, but, you know, all that being said, I'm more than willing to do whatever need be to stay. A dumpster is a huge convenience. If it's a make and break, I don't need a dumpster. But it is a huge, huge convenience for us. Um, I think I can more than accommodate any screening needs. Um, only kind of leniency I would ask for is anything along the front property line. I don't want to invest a lot of funds in that, not knowing ultimately what's going to happen with the VDOT lane, Mr. Willis's development, you know, if something could be done in conjunction with his timeline on that as far as me, because my goal is to do a Beverly Hills entrance. I'm going to do a landscaped gate, gated entry. You're not going to be able to see that my house from the road by the time I'm done. Um, we do a lot of high-end homes. My goal is to make mine a high-end home. You know, we do run a commercial business out of there, but I feel like if you, it's still under construction now, obviously, but once it is done, I want it to be one of the more high-end homes in Pocosin. So, and I, and I think I have no problem doing that. So, but all that being considered, I really appreciate you guys, those of you that spoke with me and came out, you know, looking at everything, just to kind of wrap your head around it more, because, you know, unanimous approval from the zoning commission. Aside from Mr. Ayer, I didn't even. I spoke with his wife, but not him, just with him being on the board. And unanimous approval from all my neighbors, had, having signed a petition that they were okay with it. You know, The two guys that are most affected by the view of the property <coughs> do work for me. They're one of my subcontractors. You know, <coughs> We're a Pocosin company. I subcontract probably 10 other Pocosin companies to do work for me. So I'd like to stay here and appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, anyone else would like to speak on this issue? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for consideration by council. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt a resolution approving a conditional use permit for the establishment and operation of a landscaping business at 93 Firth Lane, the Coast and Tax Map, parcel number 19-01-00-0012. With the following changes <coughs> to the conditions, uh, the deletion of item six totally. Uh, I know that uh, Mr. Dunlap expressed to me that he, if he does a big paving job and has a pallet of pavers left over, he'd like to be able to take them back there and keep them and use them on another job. To makes total sense. Uh, so I'd like to delete item six. In item 10, I'd like to reword that to say this use permit shall be subject to review and an additional public hearing at the three-year mark and strike the second sentence totally. 
and the reason for that is uh, with the townhouses being built, there'll be new neighbors, and I'd like to hear how it's affecting them. Uh, hopefully that project will be done well before the three years. Uh, the one commercial dumpster, number 11, uh, I'd like to add, uh, instead of ending at 3 p.m., it's say and centrally located on the property rather than on a property line uh, on the edge of the property. I think it'd be less obtrusive if it's in the center of the property. And finally, in number 12, uh, occasional commercial deliveries are allowed on weekdays between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Add this, another sentence saying, specifically limited to one per month. Um, Dunlap expressed to me that sometimes <coughs> you'll get a good deal on some materials that were supposed to go to somebody else. They decide last minute not to buy them, and he can get them for a tremendously reduced price. So if he could... Take those deliveries occasionally. I, I, that, again, makes good business sense. I didn't quite understand. You want to add to that? Add the, add the sentence. In other words, occasional deliveries doesn't really, I mean, occasional to you may be yes. three a day. Right. Occasional, I would like to further say that specifically limited to one per month. Do you think 12 yearly might be a little more flexible based on building um, seasons? Yeah, uh, I'd rather do it that way than say <coughs> one a month, and then, okay. you know, you get one on the 29th and something happens on the second, and we say sorry. All right, then I'll, I'll amend it to say specifically limited to 12 per year. Okay. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded that we approve the resolution with those changes inserted, basically striking item 6, changing the wording on item 10, and uh, on our proposed for 11 and 12, and everything else stays the same. Okay, questions or comments? I'd like to just voice my um, concern that this is zoned residential, and I don't like the idea of um, allowing a business <coughs> in a residential zone simply because it's convenient for the owner when there are places that he, he could be using to um, to run a business right now. And we do have businesses that are competing against him that are paying and zoned properly. Um, I'm, I'm inclined naturally to, to deny this request, but based on everybody seems to be okay with this, other than me, um, the fact that the Planning Commission recommended the city staff says it's, it, you know, given these conditions are fine. Um, the fact that all of the neighbors say it's, they don't mind. And um, that we're going to renew it, or we're going to review it in three years. I think that that probably gives enough um, checks and balances that, that it, we can try it and see and see how it works. What I don't want to happen is in three years, if it was a problem, to just keep dragging it out. I want to make sure that wh whoever council is sitting here then, um, you know, really decides is this a good place for a business or not, if there are new neighbors especially. <clears throat> Three years as a neighbor, I'll know if there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but will we'll council up here care at that time if he's been I'm running sure, a business I'm, for, you know. I'm and sure they will. So. Mr. Dunlap has a, a goal in mind that right. once his receipts reach that certain right. goal, he wants to be somewhere else. Right, and I, I encourage that and I applaud you and uh, welcome your business and, and wish you the best. But I, I just did want to voice that. I mean, just for the record, I think you've already started screening. I've seen some trees on the outsides already coming up, so looks good. And just another very general comment. I think we have, I don't know, maybe hundreds of home-based businesses in town all over the place in every kind of neighborhood now. And I think that that's not really such a bad thing. And I don't think it makes us too terribly commercial. Right. And as long as they can be <clears throat> unobtrusive, um, mm -hmm. I think that, that can work. Exactly where does that zone change? Because with the car wash right there, the, the, the yeah. zone itself has to be very, very close to. Yeah, that's uh, where it changes. On the line. That's the yeah. It is. It's yeah. the, I, think, I think council's concern at the last meeting was the depth of the property, how far it reaches into the residential zone. Yeah. And I think it's all about 
uh, being a good neighbor. I certainly have no issue with this. Uh, I think council has thoughtfully put in some levels of controls that, and maybe even uh, a little bit more conservative than, than I might have been. But it's okay. Um, and they basically have protected the, the citizens that says, you know, be a good neighbor for three years and you can move on. So right. I think I'm, I'm fine with the amount of controls that you've inserted here. So, okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Judy, please. Councilwoman Crawford? Aye. Councilman Ayer? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Councilman Bernal? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. And Mayor Hunt? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of 7 to 0. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, first under, item under new business is a resolution authorizing the advertisement of a public hearing to consider an easement across city-owned property at 500 City Hall Avenue. Randy, how would you like to proceed? Mr. Mayor, members of council, as you will recall from several months ago, um, much earlier in this, uh, well, I guess in this uh, calendar year, uh, we, we were approached, you were approached, um, with regard to a solution to provide some access into this general area of the Big Woods uh, to properties that are behind City Hall. And at that time, discussions began, and, and, um, and you'll see those, uh, the basic elements of that reflected in a proposed option agreement, which was uh, drafted by Mr. Moore with uh, input from me after we sought input from you with regard to a possible arrangement that would essentially provide an ingress-egress easement <coughs> that would allow for an extension of City Hall Avenue um, in the back, if, if you think about the back parking area, it's to the right-hand side, hugging but not touching the area leased to the tower company. Um, that would actually be constructed as a public street by the people uh, that would be getting the option. So not as a taxpayer's expense, but constructed at, at to city and, and VDOT standards. Uh, we would maintain control of it. Any, any parking spaces um, that would be um, eliminated by that would need to be replaced by, by the future developer. And in exchange for that, to activate the easement, the um, the developer, the, the owner in this case, because they're, I think, I don't think the owner intends to, to be a developer. I know I'm interchanging the terms, but I don't mean to. I mean the the, uh, the person that's requesting the easement from us, the, the group, they need to provide a public ingress and egress easement through their property to serve the properties in the back. And further, that any roadway that would be constructed within that easement be constructed to, to VDOT standards and be a public street. Um, and what this does, um, if you approve it, is to set this up, and um, there's a longer version of what I summarized in the attachment for public hearing uh, in January. You received public comment on that. Mr. Moore, did I miss anything important? No. What we did, we, grabbed, we put it in the form of an option because uh, the current owners, I'm pretty sure, will not be developing the property. They'll be marketing it. Um, uh, there is some interest from um, Mr. Spencer's group and some other folks, and so uh, they just need to get it finalized. And obviously, we can't grant the option because it's a grant in property without a public hearing, and they offering us a uh, bid in order to accept the option. Gotcha. Mr. Mayor, if I could, I, I would note one thing I did forget. Uh, it's not perpetual as an option. Uh, the requester, if, if approved ultimately by you, would have as drafted until March 31st, 2019 to activate the option. If they failed to do that, it would expire. We put a timeline on it. it. Yes, sir. Okay. And this is just the first step in the process. This is a resolution to, to advertise for public hearing. So... Uh, I'll ask for consideration by council. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt a resolution authorizing the scheduling of a public hearing on the granting of an ingress, egress, easement across city-owned property. Second. OK. 
Okay, motion made and seconded that we uh, adopt this resolution. Any questions or comments? Am I remembering correctly that there is no current ingress or egress other than what they're wanting from us? That, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. Uh, anything else from council? Not Judy, please. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Vernal. Aye. Councilman Ayer. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilwoman Crawford. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of seven to zero. Okay, next item under new business is a resolution approving the agreement for curbside recycling services between the city of Pocosin and Virginia Peninsula's Public Service Authority, or no, otherwise known as VIPSA. And uh, how would you like I'll, to proceed I'll, with this? I'll kick it off if I could, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Uh, I think it's useful to sort of talk about what this item is, and then uh, Mr. Jones, who I am your representative uh, on VIPSA, and nine out of ten meetings, um, Mr. Jones represents us. Um, he does a really good job, and uh, and so does all of the VIPSA board, and, and Mr. Geiser as well. Um, the item before you tonight specifically is whether or not we want to continue to be a part of the VIPSA program, uh, and that is the, the first several pages. Through the year uh, 2019, we have been uh, with VIPSA uh, since 1996. Also included is uh, a discussion about what that current contract that VIPSA may have with a new provider would look like. We'll clear out the, we're not, you're not asked to sign the contract with the provider. That's a VIPSA thing. And it will incorporate its members. So that's, that's the first thing. Um, VIPSA has been um, re-looking at how it does household collection of recycling for some time. It was time to renew that contract. Um, I applaud them because they really thought outside the box and challenged their own sort of thinking. Uh, with the idea of sort of maintaining, maybe expanding service, and if possible, curtailing uh, to the extent they could future cost increases. One of the things that they focused on, and um, as a staff, at least Mr. Jones and I, we didn't like it until right at the end, and, and I'll tell you what happened, but the, the, the contract, which really is the foundation <coughs> for the future, has some changes in it, and that was why it was so important that it come to you at the same time so that you knew what the future looked like and didn't find yourself inadvertently backed into something that you didn't know. Um, essentially what, they're, what they had, that underlying contract for actual services would be, would, it would, there are three things important to know about it in my view. One is um, they're proposing to get rid of the, what, I think they're 18 gallon open containers. The green barrel. Green their, yeah, and replace them at the contractor's expense. That was one of the first things that, that caught our eye towards the end. Um, a, a, a large, it looked like the city's standard large trash container with a lid on wheels. Um, and I think that's a good thing. There's a provision for very heavy recyclers to actually get a larger bin than that, and a provision for light recyclers to get a smaller one. But the standard looks just like um, our current one. It may be a different color, but that's the size to think about. Our current large. Our current large container. Okay. And it has a lid on it. And if you're like me and you, after recycling, you have to go through and pick up all the, <laughs> the blown out envelopes and other things <clears throat> or keep the dogs out or, or whatever, I, I think there's value there for me. Um, so if you... But that's the upside. The downside is, um, rather than having a collection every week in order to, to do this cost effectively and provide all of those cans at no, no direct charge to the city, they're proposing, not just for us, but everyone, to go to every other week collection, but of a much larger container with a lid on it. And then the, the third aspect I wanted to bring to your attention before I ask Tom and, and later Stephen to come up is Instead of looking at how much this is going to cost us more in the future, by looking at it a different way and having a contractor that 
we'll be able to do more with a smaller workforce. They'll be using a, a truck like the, how the waste truck with an arm that picks it up. Um, instead of talking about how much more this is going to cost us, this promises to cost us somewhat less. Not a, not a giant amount, but any amount is, is important to consider. And what I recall for us, the, per, the generalized projected annual savings, it's about $80,000 a year. That's paid for by our rate payers in that bill you get every other month. And um, barring any unforeseen and unplanned for complication, if you approve this, when the new service comes in line, we'd like to come back, intend to come back with a recommendation to actually lower the fee. Um, and that fee reduction it would look like right now, about $2 a household per billing cycle. Again, not a, a great deal of money, but we don't need any more money than we need. And so um, I've probably stolen most of the, of the thunder, but uh, why don't I ask uh, Tom to come forward first, and then um, he will introduce Steve Geisler to you, although I think most of you know Steve. And he can fill in the pieces that I've missed, and um, Steve can talk about not only this, but any other questions you may have about Vipsa. We can come together if you're talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Save time. I mean, you know, because Randy said everything, and you two just have to come up here and look good, so. Yeah, and what I wanted to do, I wanted to, you know, kind of hit on what Randy said, you know, and, and give you all a little more information kind of about the partnership that we have with VIPSA. You know, we've actually been in with VIPSA for about 20 years. It was a little earlier than, than 96, um, <clears throat> and we've had a great partnership with them. Um, they not only have done our curbside recycling stuff, they actually do, like, when we have a, a, a terrible disaster storm, it's, you know, all the debris contracts, they, they put that out through, you know, multi-jurisdictions, not just us. It's, you know, it's, it's different localities. Um, they actually now, just on the peninsula, not counting other areas, <coughs> you know, it's like us, uh, Hampton, York County, James City, Williamsburg. We're kind of all in it as a partnership. And they also provide uh, a lot of help, mostly on our recycling of chemicals and uh, just all those types of things. Storm debris, landscape recycling, they take all of that for us as well. Um, and, you know, I can go ahead and just briefly go over kind of what Randy said. You know, this, this uh, new curbside recycling, you know, the few things that we would have, of course, we'd have a new vendor. Our old vendor, uh, uh, you know, has been great with what we've had. And I think, you know, this new, what Randy was talking about, you know, this new thing will be taking uh, the 18-gallon totes and doing away with them, which we have had, you know, we have a lot of complaints about wet material, material blowing around the neighborhoods. Um, you know, personally, I think, you know, it's the way of the future, and actually York County has, they've gone with, with the closed lid containers as well as Hampton, and there's other localities that do them as well. But, in, and also the thing that Randy said was, you know, about the every other week pickup, which that's what it would go to, it actually has proven to save, you know, to generate more recycling in the long run, because a lot of folks out there, and, you know, they fill their little container up, then the rest of the stuff, instead of put it beside, they just throw it in the trash can. So, you know, I think in the long run, it will promote, you know, more recycling. And we, you know, Picosan, that's one thing I'm really proud of, is the way we recycle. We're top of the line recyclers. And I think this is a win-win, you know, situation for them personally. Um, you know, the other thing is, like, you know, it's a significant, um, reduction in cost per year for us. I mean, eighty thousand dollars is probably is is what you know. It's kind of an estimated thing. It's give or take a little bit, but per year, that's a significant cost savings for for our citizens. And any time we can give a little back, I think it's a great thing to do. So, you know, at this time, I've kind of gone over most everything. And Steve is like a um, he's like an encyclopedia of all this type of recycling and any questions that you may have. I'm going to introduce him now. I, I'm going to have one, and that is, are we going to be able to recycle the green bins? Let yeah. me bring Steve up here and introduce him. 
that has been a question. And, you know, these bins, I, we haven't decided what we're going to do with these bins yet, you know, when we move to the future. But I'm sure we'll come up with a, you know, a good thing for them. Just don't so, make a yeah, work out of them. Right? <clears throat> so I would think people would want to keep them because now they can collect it inside till that gets full, take it out and dump it in the big one. And that's that's yeah, you know, that question. may be. I, I'm just you know at this time we haven't really decided. But let me bring Steve up and introduce him. <laughs> Steve, come on up. This is uh, Steve Geisler, executive director of VIPSA. And welcome, Steve. He'll answer Thank any you. questions. And welcome for the you and, and you are truly here. welcome because VIPSA, as as many of us know, they've been here for many many years. VIPSA has done uh, tremendous service to the city of Pocosin, so so welcome. Thank you. And uh, thank you for for uh, considering something. Uh, unique like this, so go right ahead. Well, I, I just have um, I, I don't want to repeat things, but there's just a couple thing, a couple points I want to make. First, um, just a reminder that the the four um, communities that are part of this project are Pocosin, York County, Williamsburg, and James City County. Uh, Pocosin is the first to consider this agreement uh, tomorrow night. Um, James City County will consider the agreement on Thursday afternoon, Williamsburg, and then a week from Tuesday, a week from tomorrow night, York County. So we'll have, hopefully we'll have quick action on, on the service agreements. The VIPSA board approved the agreement with County Waste uh, last Friday. Um, and in that agreement, that has all of the nuts and bolts of you can start collection at a certain time. Um, and you know, so all of the all of the nuts and bolts of, of the actual um, service. Um, the uh, the movement from the 18 gallon bins from the to the to the to the rollout carts is this is consistent with trends that we have seen locally and nationally. And um, our program is the last one on the peninsula that's still using the bins. The city of Hampton went to the rollout carts every other week collection more than 10 years ago. The city of Newport News did the same thing about 10 years ago. All of the cities and counties over on South Side are now using the rollout carts with every other week collection. I think the only possible concern you would have, you might have with this, is the every other week, um, and um, you know we we try to make this re this recycling program as convenient as possible for the residents, and this is this is the first time that we have imposed some inconvenience. But I think I think once once the residents see that they can roll their carts out similar to their trash. I think they will be very happy that they no longer need to lug the, the, the bin out. As far as what they can do with the bin, um, I think a lot of people will in fact do exactly what Mr. Green suggested, is they will keep their, the smaller bin inside and then take it out. Um, if, if residents don't want their bin, um, we will arrange to have it picked up. Um, but they are, you know, I, I have I have a couple extras in my in my garage. One holds my uh, my circular saw and a couple other things. So they're, <laughs> they're all they're they're, they're they're very functional. Um, so I, I don't want to uh, go on and, and and belabor the issue, but I, uh, it is a um, uh, I w we are very happy with it. Um, the uh, we spent a lot of time reviewing this, all of the board members, so uh, Tom and, and Bodina were involved in the review. We had all of our, uh, the board members from the four cities and counties, staff members. Um, we spent a considerable amount of time reviewing the proposals, just making sure that we were uh, making the right selection and the right recommendation to all the cities and counties. Thank you. If uh, just, I guess, one general note. Let's assume, and this is an assumption, that uh, we, we move through this and all four localities follow. So about when uh, would this program start? Uh, we would, uh, the, the contract is to start July 1st, 2014. Okay. So the first thing that we will do in, uh, in January is, information. Is, is we'll be busy putting together the public education and information program. The one thing that, and, and as Tom mentioned, the one thing that we have, uh, one benefit that we have is York County went through this a little over a year ago. 
Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, less than a year ago, uh, this, this, this past May. Um, so we do have their experience and uh, they are very quick to help us with what they did right, what they did wrong. Um, but you know, we're, our plan is, is to start on the public education and information program as soon as we can uh, in January. Okay. Randy. Stephen, can I ask you a question? Uh, I can't remember the answer to this because I'm not, I'm not sure that it's been finalized, but will there be a single day that the collection happens um, or, or will it be multiple days uh, in a locality, in our locality? Right now, the, the routing isn't, hasn't been established, but what we will do is, you know, in, again in January, we'll sit down, we'll get all four cities and counties in the room, and we'll get the contractor in the room, and everybody will say, here's what I would like to see. I want my collection on the same day as trash collection. I want it the same day that I have now. So we'll get everybody's wish list and then do our best to satisfy everybody's wish list. The reason I list. ask um, is just a suggestion, and I don't think it would cost very much, but I think it might help people. Um, when you deliver that bin for the first time, a sticker on the side of it that shows the collection dates for the, for the coming year might really help people. And um, it should be a, a very small cost and even if there was two or three routes in the city, you know which house it's going to be where because you're going to have to drop the bin off there. Yeah. So, When the card is delivered, there will be an information package. What many programs do, uh, uh, what many programs who have the uh, every other week collection, they'll have, for example, a red week and a blue week, and, and they'll, get, they'll actually get a calendar. Um, so people will have a calendar that they can put up on their refrigerator and they can see when their collection is. There's a whole bunch of different ways that, that we can do to, to get the information out to, uh, to the residents. Other questions of council? Just, well, I actually have two. One's not related to it, but I still like that. Uh, the first question is, being the old retired engineer estimator that I am, whenever I see a bid that this is this much lower than two other bids, I worry that they can actually perform. The, and, and, and I mentioned the time that we spent on this. The, um, the first thing that the group collectively said is um, if it looks too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Um, and this particular company is providing the, has been providing these services for quite a while at these rates uh, for quite a while. Okay. Um, there, is, um, there is significant, the, the, the one thing that, that we do with, with this program is when the, when the material, when we put the, the material out of the curb and the contractor picks it up, it's his, including all the revenue that comes along with that. And they are taking, you know, they are taking all of the risk. There is considerable revenue available to them, but, you know, as the markets go up and down, so I think what we see is the other contractors are more conservative in their pricing. Um, obviously, this contractor was, was very aggressive. Good. The other thing is, I noticed when we got our rules for the coming year. They didn't mention the plastic types. Are they accepting all plastic now? Okay. Uh, plastics, uh, the plastics are um, an issue that, that we have spent a considerable amount of time on. The, the plastics that we will include in the program are the same that we have now, which are the PET uh, water bottles, which are which are what you have right in front of you, and the HDPE bottles and jugs. One and two. We will right. Okay. We will not include any additional plastics, okay. and the reason is the we have a high degree of confidence that the PET and the HDPE bottles and jugs can and will be recycled and and put to a beneficial use. Everything else. Um, 
the three through the three through sevens, we don't have that confidence. Most of those plastics, when they go to a, a single stream processing facility like, like we're using now and we'll be using in the future, almost all facilities sell those plastics bundled as a mixed plastic and almost all of those are sold overseas, meaning India, China, and we don't exactly know what's going to happen to them then. And I mean, we want to recycle more plastics, but we don't want to include plastics in the program or any material in the program that we don't have a high degree of confidence will be able to be pulled out and recycled and, and used beneficially. Yeah. I think it would be important to, to uh, w when the new bins are distributed, to have some kind of listing so that people understand w what those different classes are. Because with a big closed lid, it would be easy for everything just to go in it and, and uh, without. You know. And that's and, and and that is one of the challenges with with this type of a system, is that with with the 18 gallon bin, the collector has. You know, we, we, have, we have a much better opportunity to provide feedback to the resident. So when we see a brick in there, we can, we can tell, we can leave the brick behind and say to the homeowner, you know, bricks are not recyclable. But with that cart, you put the brick inside and the brick is in there. Exactly what I'm thinking. And, and so the resident, you know, I, I put something in, it gets picked up, therefore it's recyclable. Um, we have a we have a much harder public education mm -hmm. with those carts. The the processors um, have learned to deal with that. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Did you say this system quick. was in place on the south side? Now the the rollout cart system. Yeah. Feed, good feedback. Yeah. Sure. All of, yeah. And, and this is this is a trend we're seeing nationally. And I, I think in, in the memo, I, I listed a whole bunch of reasons why it's going to, and it's, it's convenience for the, for the homeowner, it's safety. Um, and this cart system is what allows the contractors to be much more aggressive in their pricing because there's one guy on the truck, he's going by and he's picking it up and he's moving on. So they have much better productivity. Gotcha. I have a concern. I'm a my family's heavy recycling too, as I'm sure most of you are. But um, I worry about two weeks worth, even if I get the large one, just having things jammed down in there to where it doesn't get dumped. Because I know we have that trouble sometimes with garbage cans in the city. Um, does the, have you, does that, I'm sure it happens, but <clears throat> is that something we need to worry about? Um, no, and what the, uh, these, these type of systems um, and I, I don't know exactly what type of truck they're, uh, they're going to use, but most of these trucks, uh, the, the driver uh, can see okay. what's coming in. And this is, this, is one of the, this is one of the ways to monitor, monitor contamination, okay. is when he picks up the cart, you know, and he can see, he either has a mirror or a camera or something where he can see, and if he dumps it and he sees that it's, um, you know that you know that, that that you know that that all of those all of those cardboard boxes are wedged inside there. Um, he should get out and and pull it out. You know, in one provision, I wanted to say this in the contract that you know, like what we have now are 18 gallon totes. You're going to end up. Everyone will get a 65. If you're a heavy recycler, I'm two and three a week. But if now. you have that, if you're a heavy recycler and your lid's up that driver's going to note that, and he's automatically going to upgrade you one time for free to a 95. And that's, so I can't start with a That's one. huge. Okay. You may be able to. It, we're, we're still kind of we in can, that yeah. process. I'm pretty sure you can. Okay. But. The one, this, um, one of the things that, that has impressed me about, about this contractor so far is they, they understand <coughs> um, customer service that, um, you know, they, they really want to make it easy for the, um, for the resident to recycle. And, and this is why, I, and, and they offered to, to change the size of the cart. Um, and if, and this, is, this is the way that, the, this is their standard way of doing business, is when they start recycling, they start with a 65, they generally start with a 65 gallon cart. 
because they feel that that is what most residents want. And if somebody, if, if you have extras, you can put material outside of the cart, which most contractors, almost all contractors, will not collect material that's outside of the cart. They will do that. But what they'll do is they'll, when they, when they get out and they'll take it out, the driver will mark down your address and say they had extra material out. When he goes by the next, the next time and sees it again, then he gets in touch with the office and said, this person needs a bigger cart. Um, and uh, I, I believe that, that if, if we have circumstances where we know right up front that somebody really is going to want a bigger cart, I think we'll be able to work that out. Okay. Anything else? Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for much. the information. Okay, so is there, uh, is council ready to move forward with a resolution approving the agreement? May I move that we adopt a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract with the Virginia Peninsula's Public Service Authority for the curbside collection of recycled. Second. The motion made in saying that we approve this resolution. Questions or comments? Seeing none, Judy, please. Councilman Southall. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Grinnell. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Ayer. Aye. Councilwoman Crawford. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote is 7 to 0. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the next item under new business is an ordinance making additional appropriations and transfers for fiscal year 2014. Randy? I'll take it. And if you can see straight to turn wide or raise her hand real fast, you know, she'll correct me. But if you have had an opportunity, I'm sure you have, to read the supporting documentation, there are three pages of transfers, appropriations, and the vast majority, especially as it relates to the first two pages, are grants that the staff has gone out for, um, donations, and in carryovers from a previous year of, of that kind of thing. We don't rush to spend something simply to spend it. We, uh, we shepherd it for when we need it. And I think you see that reflected here as well. I mean, there are almost 20 entries um, that relate to grants or donations. And you can see what each one of those um, is for. There are a couple of just basic accounting um, transfers like the Small Business Development um, Center and the spreading out of the, um, the money to, for the implementation of the pay plan that we had already done to the different funds. But, um, you know, I think there are lots of things uh, to be commended. Library, uh, and the Friends of the Library and the Library is always to be commended for their efforts uh, towards book sales and, and donations to support the library. You'll see, uh, with a smile, I think the continuing donations for Kids Island and the continuing work of that group along with Tom and his staff. You'll notice if you, every, every season when you go out, there's a little bit something different um, added to Kids Island. And that's a, that's a combination of the hard work of the citizens that are working on it and a little bit of ingenuity and uh, resources from Tom and his group. Uh, so that, that continues uh, to move forward. There are um, three items that I specifically uh, wanted to bring to your attention, and between Therese and I will try to answer any questions you have. But if, if I could, if you would go to the last page, and I'll work from the bottom, because they are the last three. Um, I wanted to extend mine, and I'm sure your appreciation to our Attorney General who uh, recently allocated to the city of Picosa a little over $90,000 from an asset uh, forfeiture case that his office was involved in. Um, this money, which requires no local match from the city of Picosa, will allow us to purchase and completely outfit two police cars and uh, some additional police equipment. Um, this is the best kind of grant for us and really the best way to to go at the fact that we've been very strained with our capital funding, including capital equipment replacement. This will really help. And he didn't need to do this, but he did. And, um, I, and just my appreciation goes out to our Attorney General for that. 
and I hope you'll appropriate it. I hate to send him that letter back, but that, <laughs> but I'm sure someone else would take it. Think about it. Um, I think I think we can handle that. We're yeah. Working backwards, um, the uh, superintendent of school on behalf of the school board has requested reappropriation of their carryover from last year in the amount of forty-one thousand dollars, two hundred fifty, forty-one thousand two hundred fifty-four. The uses of the uh, money would be to enhance uh, safety and security at the schools and to provide the local match for a technology grant. Superintendent is not here. She's at another school program tonight. Um, I bring this to you with, with my recommendation for approval, but if for some reason you are concerned about it, I would request that you table it until the next meeting and then that, that item. And then lastly, uh, of the three, um, this has been uh, this is an item which is similar to one that you saw last year. It comes from our work boat race partners, the Pocosi Yacht Club, and the long and the short of it is they brought in more revenue than they expected in, from the past race. They also spent a little bit more than they budgeted, but again, they had the money to cover it. And the net there is $5,373. That is sort of the net proceeds based on that simple profit model that we've used or that they've used to calculate the income and, and expense of the event. It does not include the uh, money that the city provides for prize money, which is separate. So having set that table, um, what they're asking you to do is to consider appropriating that difference, is, which is money we have actually received, uh, $5,373 back into their um, budget. You'll see the appropriation is actually for eighty-four sixty-eight, but that's to cover the what has already been spent. Uh, but the net appropriation would be available, they're requesting, to support next year's race, both in terms of the balance of this fiscal year for what I think they termed non-prize expenses, and also to be carried over any portion that was remaining to next fiscal year, which would potentially be for the balance of the non-prize expenses and for their fuel reimbursement and racer awards uh, for next year's race. And you'll see a, an email from, from them on that subject. And with that, um, between Teresa and I, we'll try to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Any questions of Bill? I just got one real quick, if either of you know all just off the top of your head, the number of grants that the city received. Okay, I can, I can go with a bunch. I mean, I don't need, I don't need research. Yeah, I don't need research. A bunch is fine. But I know how hard those things are to get because I'm kind of in that business. And the fact that they have like three pages worth of them listed is just somewhat amazing to me. It's a big turn from when it, the way it used to be. Everybody, I mean, I remember the days when we didn't have any grants. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so, that is. So a, uh, a great turnaround in time. Uh, is there a motion that we... Uh, just one more question. Uh, Randy, on, yeah, just for my information, on the second page of the list of all these, third bullet from the bottom, is that uh -huh. supposed to be FY 2013? It's 14. Oh, I'm saying the se second See, bullet from the bottom? Yes, yeah. third, the third bullet from the bottom. The fire department received a Virginia Fire Services Board hardware grant. Mm -hmm. But we're in FY 2014. Yes, and we just got the grant. Okay. So, so we would like, that runs to the end of June. Gotcha. So we would like to appropriate it. We didn't know about it with certainty to include it in the adopted budget. Right. So now we'd like to add it. In oh, okay. Town. That's a, that's a small grant program that the Fire Services Board has. There are others, and we are beneficiaries of most of that program. Very good. Before and I ever I had, got appointed to it. I had one more. On the uh, work boat race yes, sir. money, um, you said that this did not take into account the city. So they put the city money into the what they consider revenue and then subtracted the two to come up with this number? No, sir. Um, let me try to be clear again, and, and I apologize if I'm confusing. If you think about the race as two completely separate things, one is the city's contribution to support the prize money. 
Just put that over here. Okay. For a so moment. it's just prize money that the city money goes. Right. For that's five thousand dollars to support the prize money. That didn't used to be the case. Um, we've been doing that now, I think, for three years in one form or another. On the other side is the is the revenue and expense for the event the expense for the vendors, for the advertising, and then offsetting that is the cost or the, or the monies they get from sponsors and from vendors that are down there. And there really are two separate. So what I meant to say was when they said that they netted $5,300 in, in profit revenue over expenses, it didn't include what was over here at all. That's okay. an additional $5,000 um, allocation. Okay. I'm just curious. Uh, and the prize money is how much? Five thousand dollars currently. So basically, <coughs> yeah, yeah. one way to look at it is they're breaking even. Yeah, basically. They are. Right. If but then if you were to reappropriate that amount of money, then you would be uh, gotcha. back to fifty three hundred seventy three dollars. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there a motion to? Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt an ordinance making additional appropriations and transfers for fiscal year 2013-14. Second. The motion is made and seconded. We approve this ordinance. Questions or comments? Seeing none, Judy, please. Councilman Ayer. Aye. Councilwoman Crawford. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilman Vernal. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by vote of seven to zero. Okay. Next item under new business and the final under item under new business is a resolution making appointments to the Architectural Review Board. Somebody prepare with a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt a resolution making appointments to the Architectural Review Board with the following names inserted. Robert J. Cox, whose term will expire December 31st, 2016, and William B. Price, whose term will expire at the same time. Second. Okay, motion made and second that we approve the resolution with those two names inserted. <coughs> Questions or comments? Seeing none, Judy, please. Yes, Councilwoman Crawford. Aye. Councilman Ayer. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Vernal. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of seven to zero. <coughs> City Manager. Just uh, three things briefly. One is a reminder, not to you, but to the public, that uh, tomorrow evening, City Council will be meeting in joint session with the school board and a joint work session at five o'clock at the middle school, and the public is welcome to attend. Um, second, I just want to extend uh, congratulations and appreciation to Debbie Mahanes and the whole army of folks that worked with her uh, to volunteer and all of the folks that participated in the parade. It was, but I understand it was really, really good. I was home ill, but my, my family went and uh, I've heard nothing but good things about it. And that, th that kind of event doesn't happen by accident. It looks like, you know, it takes 30 minutes, but it really takes uh, several, many weeks to plan and, and to do it well. And, and they did a great job again. And then lastly, um, in addition to the folks that normally get thanked when we get a good audit, which is the finance department and the school's finance department, let's take a moment to thank all of those people that, that deal with money on our behalf. The, um, the folks that handle the, uh, the routine minor expenditures in the departments and the payroll and, and all of that. When, when Mr. Pila talks about an internal control check, it's everything. And, um, and the folks who do a really good job, and I just want to take a moment and commend them for that. They take it very seriously. Well said. Well said. That's all, right. all sir. Okay. Bud? Second everything Randy said, and that's all of my comments. Okay. Tracy? Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor. Agree with Randy, and I just want to wish everybody Merry Christmas. Okay. Dr. Verdahl? Well, uh, just uh, echo once again, uh, wishing everybody a very Merry Christmas and prosperous, a Happy New Year, and a very safe one if you're doing some traveling. And uh, commend everybody that uh, as we quickly went through the, uh, the reappropriation of funds, it showed very responsible management on the part of all the agencies, including the school system. And I think it is a, it's a, 
really important for us to <coughs> recognize that and to allow those funds to be reappropriated in the categories from which they came because if you, you follow the news sometimes you see that can be very contentious in some places but I think it, it speaks well for the uh, relationship we have within our own departments and as well as with the school system and I, I think it's a, a very fine thing to continue that tradition. Well said. Councilman Green. I'd just like to thank the Volunteer Fire Department for inviting us to their party. Uh, it was a wonderful party and uh, <coughs> congratulate them on how well they pulled it off and enjoyed it very much. Uh, I'd like to also remind everybody that the food bank is early this oh, yeah. month. It will be next Tuesday on the 17th from 10 to 1 at the old City Hall. Okay. Thank you, Senator. Well, echo what everyone said and especially kudos to the Finance Department. I also want to congratulate Randy as being uh, appointed to the Governor-Elect uh, Transition Council on Local Government. And a big welcome to the newest uh, canine employee, <laughs> yep. uh, Rena. Mm -hmm. So glad to, glad to have Rena with us as well. And I will, again, wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Okay, Merry Christmas to everybody. And uh, I'd like to take the, this final meeting of the year and, and thank Council for what I've seen as a very productive year. Uh, a lot of good things, uh, a lot of challenges. Uh, coming at us in the next year. Uh, every year is a challenge, especially when we start off with budgets, you know, right off the bat. But uh, I, will, I will say that uh, we've worked together well. I think the city has benefited from it, and it's really your hard work uh, that sometimes goes unsung. So I uh, really appreciate the work of the council. So uh, Merry Christmas to you all as well. And with that said, um, remind everybody that we have the lighting of the Christmas tree this Friday. Friday, 4 o'clock, 4.30. Okay, that's why uh, we have the Vicky. <laughs> and uh, with that said, I'll take a motion that we adjourn. So move, Mr. Mayor. Nobody wants to second. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Okay, motion remains second and we adjourn this meeting. Judy, Councilman please. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Bernal. Aye. Councilman Ayer. Aye. Councilman South Hall. Aye. Councilwoman Crawford. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of seven to zero. Thank you. We are adjourned. Let's go, Cowboys. Definitely. Tom. Thank you. That was, my, that was another directive. <laughs>